President Trump freezes military aid to a foreign country, then asks its leader for a favor. Now an impeachment inquiry is underway. But why is the United States sending millions of dollars in military aid to Ukraine in the first place? And what would happen if that aid stopped? To understand this conflict, we have to go back to the early 1990s. This is when Ukraine is part of the Soviet Union and under communist control. The Berlin Wall falls, the Iron Curtain collapses, and the Cold War ends. Ukraine emerges as a sovereign nation, positioned between Russia on the east and NATO allies to the west. It declares itself a neutral state, but a decades-long power struggle between two factions within the country begins. One group wants to align more closely with the European Union, and the other with Russia. Fast forward two decades now. Russia has cut off natural gas to Ukraine twice. Steel prices are sliding and a financial crisis hits. Russia's preferred candidate, Viktor Yanukovych, is elected president. At this point, Ukraine's largest trading partner is Russia, but the country is on the brink of bankruptcy. Under pressure from Moscow, Yanukovych suspends a landmark political and trade deal with their European Union. He accepts, instead, financial assistance from Russia. Pro-European protests erupt across Ukraine, and Yanukovych is forced from power. Russia considers the ousting of Yanukovych an illegal coup. They send some 16,000 troops into Crimea. It's a primarily Russian-speaking peninsula, but one that is part of Ukraine. Russia illegally annexes the land, along with Crimea's natural gas reserves. It's the most significant land grab in Europe since World War II. To offset Russia's advances, the U.S. sends aid to Ukraine and hits Russian officials and entities with sanctions. Then pro-Russian rebels take over government and police buildings in eastern Ukraine. And fighting breaks out there. The Ukrainian army responds, but Russia backs the rebels and the conflict escalates. In the midst of this fighting, a commercial airliner is shot out of the sky over Europe. 298 people die, including dozens of children. A Dutch-led investigation later determines that, despite persistent claims to the contrary, it was a Russian missile fired from Russian-controlled territory that shot it down. The U.S. under President Obama considers sending weapons to Ukraine. The 21st century uh, cannot have us stand idle and, and simply allow the borders of Europe to be redrawn at the barrel of a gun. European leaders fear that could further ignite the conflict. On certain issues, we may not agree. Germany and France draft a ceasefire agreement between the two parties, but that quickly falls apart. President Trump is elected in 2016, and he approves the sale of lethal weapons to Ukraine. We urge Russia to cease its destabilizing activities in Ukraine and elsewhere. By 2018, some 13,000 people have been killed in the war. The U.S. Congress approves another round of military aid, but Trump decides there may be conditions on any U.S. support. He wants to speak with Ukraine's newly elected president first and asks for a favor. Trump wants help investigating two things that could help him politically. He raises a conspiracy theory on Ukrainian involvement in the 2016 election. And he brings up vague concerns about one of his primary Democratic rivals, Joe Biden. Ukraine eventually receives that aid, which includes Javelin anti-tank missiles. But the call launches an impeachment inquiry inside the United States. There are concerns that Trump may have abused his power by asking a foreign power to investigate his political rival. The United States is Ukraine's most important ally. Now Ukraine fears its national security could be caught up in a partisan political fight thousands of miles away. If the U.S. does not maintain its support, that could leave Ukraine and other nations vulnerable to future acts of Russian aggression.